We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. In the beginning, God's Spirit hovered over the water, part of his good creation. When Jesus was baptized in the waters of the Jordan River, the Father declared his Son to be pleased, pleasing to him. In our baptism, Paul wrote, we were joined to our Lord's death and resurrection, enabling us to walk in newness of life. Let us reaffirm our faith in what God has done for us through holy baptism. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold us on whom you have bestowed true faith, and in whom, through this sacred flood, you have caused all sin to be drowned and die. Grant that we continue to be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, living in newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you renounce the devil in all his works, in all his ways? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Who are you? How do you 
define yourself. What gives your life meaning, identity, purpose? What makes you, you? You know, if I were to ask a hundred people, I would get a hundred different answers, and I'm sure if I were to ask a thousand people, I would get a thousand different answers. But certainly there are a, a lot of common themes, a lot of common areas that many of us would list. Certainly many of us might talk about our family. I am the child of a, of a pastor born in Michigan, grew up in the Midwest, taught in the South. And many of us begin to talk about where we grew up or our jobs. Because for many of us, that also is what gives us identity. Where I live. My work. And that certainly is a, is a big part of, of who many of us are. We might talk about our, our families today. Uh, our parents, our, our children, relatives, and in where they all live. We might talk about, about hobbies. Things that we do that, that make us feel good, that uh, are enjoyable to us. What is it that gives you meaning and purpose? What gives you that identity? Here's a, a challenge in life. Part of all of this process from, from birth to, to the grave is that all of those things that I, that I just listed change. People are born. People die. Very few of us, the, the, the wonderful exception, but very few of us uh, die in the place we're born. Uh, some of us Nowhere near. Talking in my parenting class, we find so much identity in our children, and then, yet, what is the purpose of being a parent? To work myself out of a job. To create an independent adult who leaves and lives their own life and brings me in as, as a valued consultant now and then, but... They're their own life. I find meaning in my job, and then I may retire, or worse yet, maybe I lose my job. So much of what we have, and so much of what gives us purpose, can actually be taken away. We realize that for many of us that leaves us in, in a very tenuous position. Who then am I really? Who is Mark Mueller? In our gospel lesson this morning, as I mentioned before, worship, the, the Sunday after the celebration of the Epiphany is. Uh, traditionally, the, the baptism of our Lord. We had this interesting scenario, I, I must say, at one level, because here comes Jesus as a grown man. We, we have one episode and one gospel of hearing that they went to the temple and he, he stayed behind and they had a 
Small incident of parent-child separation there, but that's it. We haven't heard from him in, in 30 years, and all of a sudden here appears Jesus with John, that relative of his that we had also encountered uh, prior to Christmas as uh, his mother and Jesus' mother Mary had met and, and visited, and while both of them were pregnant, and in, here comes Jesus to his cousin and is there to be baptized. Strange at one level because the baptism of repentance that, that John had, not the, the baptism in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that, that we celebrate, but a baptism of repentance for sin... Jesus had no sin. And yet, there he is, asking, insisting that John would baptize him. But as that happens, we learn something very important. We hear in our gospel in Mark that as he comes up out of the water, that voice from heaven proclaims, this is my son, with whom I am well pleased. We learn something. We learn something about Jesus' identity. Something very, very important. This isn't just an ordinary man. This is the Son of God. Separate from the Father, we we hear his voice from heaven. Separate from the Holy Spirit, we see him descend as the form of a dove. This is the Son of God. All of the Trinity present Declaring him, that beloved son with whom God is not just pleased, well pleased. Because in that perfection of of his son, as he comes to that water, he is beginning his work to do something very important. He is who he is, the the Son of God. And he's there to do a very specific work. I said he's there in, in that baptism for repentance, already identifying with sin. Not his sin, but really our sin. He's already connecting to us. Showing that solidarity with us and yes, even with our sinfulness. Fulfilling all righteousness, doing all of that which we all should do in order that when he dies on that cross, his death would pay that ultimate price for all of our sin, fulfilling all righteousness, give that to us, dying in our place that we would live. See, and that's the point of our epistle lesson this morning. The death he died, he died once for all. We in these wonderful waters of baptism, were baptized into his death. The Bible says we, in these waters of baptism, were buried with him. All of our sin, buried, taken away, removed, 
And those wonderful words, if we therefore had been buried with him through baptism into his death, we will certainly be raised with him in his resurrection. That baptism is my identity as a child of God. I am his. I have been washed clean. I have been forgiven. I have been restored. I will live forever with him in heaven. That is my identity. And the glorious thing about that identity is it cannot be taken away from me. In the words of the hymn, A Mighty Fortress, goods, fame, child, and wife, all of those can be taken away from me. I can lose it all in this life. No one can take away what God has done for me. I am baptized. That is my eternal identity. It's who I am. It's what defines me. It's how I live. Dead to sin and alive in Christ. I may not feel like it today. I may not act like it. But I am a child of God. It's who I am. It's what defines me. And if you're in that tenuous spot right now of feeling loss or confusion, if you're worried about what's going to come ahead, if you're feeling lost to, to really find that meaning and, and purpose in life, return to those waters of baptism and know you are a child of God. You are his forever. And nothing will ever be able to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Responding to all that God has done for us, we worship the Lord in our offerings and gifts.